Good afternoon. Phil Lindemann with your news from Avalanche Physical Therapy on Crystal 93. The world's best ski racers are at Copper for early season training at the U.S. Ski Team Speed Center above East Village. Olivia Petrimovic on the Crystal Morning Show today. It's been great. Uh, we've had teams in-house since October 22nd, and so it's been bustling. People have been getting prepared for the upcoming season. This evening at 5 is the U.S. Ski Team kickoff event featuring local slalom star Michaela Schifrin and all of this. We're doing giveaways from bibs to sign posters, so really great event and end it with fireworks, so Ooh. should be exciting. The ski team kickoff begins at 5 in East Village. It is free and open to the public. Copper's also got big news about music in late November, happening just two days after Turkey Day. The 27th, that Saturday, we'll have Leftover Salmon performing in Eagle's Landing in Center Village. Right. So. so Leftover Salmon to go with your Leftover Turkey from yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Returning this coming spring is the Copper Live Series with even more free live music. Chalk Art near Frisco Elementary School warns that clots, heart attack, and stroke are not common in kids. This echoes reports of heart inflammation coming from European studies of the Moderna COVID vaccine. Summit Public Health declined to comment immediately on that chalk art. The CDC says heart inflammation from Moderna is most common in teenage boys between 12 and 17 years old, but says it is rare. 70 cases for every 1 million. Pfizer is the only vaccine approved for kids under 12 in the U.S. International studies with Pfizer also found rare cases of heart inflammation, no reports of strokes or clots. Also no reports confirmed here in Summit. Colorado's Hispanic population has grown nearly 23% in a decade, now representing one in five people statewide. And a new survey shows Hispanics are most concerned about workforce equality and access to basic amenities. The Latino policy agenda gives lawmakers a baseline for meeting those needs and addressing concerns for the state's largest minority. In the high country, Hispanic concerns reflect longstanding community concerns, improving graduation rates, building workforce housing, and lowering the cost of health care. Hispanics also want wages that meet the cost of living here. Town of Frisco reviews pre-K childcare and rules for annexation at tonight's council meeting. A recent survey shows 69% of local families think childcare is unaffordable. Frisco is spending more cash than ever on childcare support next year, $262,000, up 222% in the past decade. Council also digs into rules for annexation inspired by the Lake Hill housing project on Dam Road. That project is years in the making, straddling the line between Frisco and unincorporated summit. Clarifying the annexation process could streamline things. Big meeting in Breckenridge tonight, where town council hears new laws for accessory dwelling units, approves first reading of the 2022 budget, and holds a hearing for a sprawling development at the Gondola Base Terminal. Breck hopes to update building code so that accessory dwellings are easier to build and more appealing. This was one solution to the local housing shortage. For budget, the town is spending $76.5 million on capital projects and the general fund next year. Revenue from both should be over $92 million. And at the Gondola, council voted 6 to 1 last month for a second reading on timeshares, condos, and a parking structure development. Hearing for that begins after 7 tonight. And in local sports, opening weekend for the Breckenridge Vipers semi-pro hockey team is in two weeks, November 19th and 20th. The Vipers play the Reno Ice Raiders in Breck. First race of the A-Basin Rise and Shine Rando Series went down this morning, still waiting on official results. Phil Lindemann with your news from Avalanche Physical Therapy on Crystal 93.